I mean, I've been kind of busy being kidnapped. The last two videos you did had nothing to do with getting kidnapped, or the one take car shot. You have one hour to finish the next tutorial. Get to it. Does that potato even run, Blender? Alrighty. So, I checked up with where I was last in the car shot tutorial series. And it looks like we're at the point where the camera comes out of the tailpipe of the car. So let's kick up some gravel with some particle systems. You can see here is the wheel, and you can see on frame 38 it starts spinning. So let's make sure our 3D cursor is right in there in the thick of it, and drop in a plane. I'm going to go Shift-A and add a plane here. And let's go R and X to rotate this, so it's kind of facing at an angle here. We can scale it down a little bit with S to be around the size of the tire. And then S and double tap Y will scale it down on its local Y axis. And somewhere around this size is probably good for what we want. Cool. So let's start dropping in some particle systems. You can see I'm in the particle properties tab and I'm gonna hit plus and I'm gonna drop in a particle system. And this is kind of finicky the way this works. Basically, there's settings for a particle system, and then there's actual slots for a particle system. So I'm just gonna call this slot Big Chunks. There we go. Big Boys is the setting, and Big Chunks is the system. Cool. So first of all, if we play this back, you can see things are just kinda trickling out here. Let's set the start frame to 38, because that's when the wheel actually starts spinning. So here, frame start, 38. And the last frame of this shot is 77. So let's set frame end to 77. Cool. And while we're at it, we can switch the lifetime to be something closer to 15, because these guys are gonna be really flying. Next up, we have the velocity. I'm gonna set the normal to be around 20, and this is how fast they fly out of the particle emitter. And you can see this is a pretty good speed here. Let's look at it from the camera view, because that's how we'll see it in the end. Okay, that's pretty good, but it's a little bit uniform under Velocity and Randomize. Let's go that to about 3 for the random velocity. And now you can see things are a lot more random, and I think a little bit more realistic. Cool! Alright, let's just go through a few more things with the velocity. I'm going to check Rotation, and Random Phase I'm going to turn up. You can switch the phase a little bit. Also, let's check Dynamic so things rotate in a way that actually makes sense for this situation. And let's also turn up randomize here. Basically all the random settings we want on. And now we can't really see the rotation going very much because they're just spheres. So let's put in some gravel. You can see here I've got some pre-made rocks. If we just throw in a cube over here with shift A and cube, I can show you real quick how I created them. Basically, in edit mode, we're just going to want to go right click and subdivide. Let's go to vertex select mode. And now that we've subdivided it, let's go right click and smooth vertices. We can do that a few times so it's a little bit more circular or spherical. And now let's go randomize vertices, which you can see here. We can hit that a couple of times and then let's go subdivide one more time and then let's smooth it out again do that a couple times so it's kind of a strange looking shape and for the icing on top let's just randomize it one more time okay that's a pretty strange looking shape there I think it could pass for gravel I'm just gonna right click and smooth the vertices and you can see here on these guys that I've already created they've got a bit of a gravel texture and material and this is a really simple texture and just some bump mapping so I won't go over that now but if we select the one that we just created and select one of these ones and go Control L that'll link the materials and you can see this guy is looking like some gravel now it's actually pretty smooth so if we wanted to we could go in and randomize the vertices again now it looks like it's really got an attitude cool so I'm gonna take this 
and all of the other ones. These guys are already in a collection here called Rocks. So I'm gonna take this and make sure the new one that we just created is also in that collection. There we go. Cool, they're all in Rocks collection. Now back, if we select our particles again, in the particle system settings, we can go down underneath the velocity tab and the rotation tab. Let's skip physics and go straight to where it says render. And I'm going to switch halo to collection. Now it'll be rendering a collection, but there is no collection. So let's switch that to rocks. Nice. So now we've got some rocks going on, kicking up at the camera. Cool. And you can see these have a lot of fun rotation on them from the rotation settings that we put in. I think that looks pretty good. All right. One more thing that we can change in the render settings is we can turn up some scale randomness, which I think will help quite a bit. The more you turn this up, the smaller things get, so just be aware of that. And I think that's pretty good for our first particle system here. The second one will be pretty simple. Let's just add in another slot and rename this to Wool Chunks. And you can see here we have some fresh particle settings. Once again, they're just kind of trickling out. So let's switch to the same particle system as Big Chunks. You can see Big Boys as the system. So I'm going to look that up. Big Boys. Here we go. Now it's just a whole bunch of the same thing, which we don't want. We want something a little bit different here. So let's first hit this new particle settings. And if we do that, it should have the same properties, but it has different settings now. So let's rename these settings to little boys. And now let's switch the seed so that it switches to a bit of a different pattern here from the emission. And that's looking pretty nice. Let's set the number to something closer to 7,000. And now you can see so much gravel is happening, <laughs> but the change that we want to make is down in the render settings. And we want this to be, instead of a scale of 0.5, let's actually set this to something closer to 0.2. And you can see now things are a lot smaller and that kind of makes sense. There's a lot of little bits of gravel kicking up now. Yeah, that looks pretty good. I would also say maybe with the big chunk system, the render size is a bit big. So let's switch the scale to 0.4. And now I think things are looking pretty good for us. All right, so this is good for settings for the particle systems. Let's go in and just bake these out into the cache here. So I'm gonna hit bake for, let's see, we're working on the big chunks and that'll bake pretty quickly. Let's go to the other system and bake that in. Cool. And now it's not calculating how to simulate the particles anymore, which is good because we're going to be simulating something else. I'm going to go shift S and cursor to selected with this plane selected here. And let's drop in a cube. All right, from camera view. And let's go to the last frame of the shot. Let's make this cube a little bit bigger. I'm going to go into edit mode and let's go back to face select here and just grab this side face and move that out of the camera view and this face out of the camera view. And let's grab the top and bottom and just put those where they should be. If we hit three on the number pad, we can go into side view and see where the ground is. We don't need to go much beneath the ground. And then finally, let's grab this face that's facing the camera and grab it and move it behind the camera to here. Cool. And you might be wondering what this big cube is for. Maybe you already know what's going on. We're gonna kick up some dust now to simulate even smaller particles. So if we select this big domain here and go into the simulation tab, I'm gonna hit fluid and switch this from none to domain. There we go. And I think this will be all right for the second. Let's go to our particle plane here and add in a new fluid system as well. And we can switch this from none to flow and let's switch the flow behavior from geometry to inflow. And let's add some sampling substeps. And the sampling substep setting is for when particles are really moving fast. If you don't check this, then it ends up with a whole bunch of little dots of smoke that are emitting from the particles. But sometimes, like if we look at this frame, this particle here will be here in one frame, and then it'll be all the way over here in the next frame and there'll be a gap in the middle where smoke hasn't been emitted. So by turning up sampling substeps, it'll kind of calculate the path of that particle and 
emit smoke in between the frames. So let's turn this up to about a 3 here, and that'll be really good looking for us. Alright, now down in Flow Source, I'm going to switch that from Mesh to Particle System. And let's select the system of big chunks. And now, let's see what happens if we go to frame 0 and just play through this. Okay, we've got some smoke going on. Pretty nice. Let's tighten things up a little bit here with the big domain. I'm going to go down to cache and let's set the frame start and end. Once again, 77 is our end frame or 78 if we want to be careful. And then the start frame is 37. Cool. And now it won't waste any time baking something that's not actually happening. At this point, we could go up to the resolution divisions, and I'm just going to times this by 4. So if you go shift and 8, that'll put in a little asterisk, and we can do 4, 128. And right now, if we try to play this back, it'll be really slow playing it back, and that's because this smoke is pretty difficult to calculate right away. You can see a little bit going on here. But what we're going to do is save some time and actually bake it in, so in the cache here, I'm going to switch it from Replay to Modular. And you can see there's a button that appears here that says Big Data. And maybe it won't appear if you don't have your scene saved. So let's save this out. And I'm going to hit Big Data. And I'll be right back. Okay, so once it's baked, you can see the result here. Isn't looking too bad from the camera view. Yeah, we've definitely got quite a bit of smoke going on. Cool. I think that'll look pretty good. If we want to give it a material real quick, we could split the window, go into Shader Editor. Let's add a new material for the domain. And I'm going to switch that from my principled node with Shift S. And let's look for a shader, principled volume. And we could get kind of a little bit of a dirt color going here. And maybe turn down the density a bit to, let's start with 0.4 and see how that is. If we render this out, let's see what we get. Okay, so nothing's going on right here, and that's because it's in the surface and not the volume. So let's switch it to the volume, <laughs> and then you can see we've really got something going on. And we can turn down the value of that a little bit, just so it's a little bit darker. But I think that's pretty good looking. Now if we take a look real quick here, if I go Control b from camera view and just select this little area here, and then hit F12, it'll just render that area, and we can see what we're dealing with. Okay, so this looks all right. You can see we've got all our nice little particles and the dust that it's kicking up. But if we really want this to look good, there's one more setting that we need to check. And that is in the render properties here. If we go down and check motion blur and re-render that, you can see things look so much more realistic and so much better. So that's the tutorial. I hope you found it useful. And if you're interested in learning more about visual effects in Blender, I've created a completely free video for you, and in this video I just go over five different tips for integrating your CG creations into actual footage. So if that sounds useful to you, definitely go ahead and check it out. There's a link in the description, and I hope you have an excellent day. And I also hope that guy with the sword doesn't come back.